to Sri Radha Gopinath's Pushyabhishek festival. We'll just have about five minutes of speaking because everyone is waiting for the Abhishek. Tomorrow, for the Srimad Bhagavatam class, Shamsunda Prabhu and Gurudas Prabhu will be sharing their remembrances of Srila Prabhupada. And tomorrow for the Sunday feast festival, Gurudas Prabhu, Shamsunda Prabhu, Vishaka Prabhu will be sharing their remembrances of Prabhupada and revealing photograph slides of Prabhupada that have never been seen before by human eyes. So everyone, as far as possible, please do come. Every year we celebrate this festival of Pusha Bishak. It is a festival of joy and love. Krishna tells us in Sri Bhagavad Gita, Patram Pushpam Palam To Yom Yomi Bhakta Prayacht. The perfection of life is to please God. And there is only one thing in all of existence that pleases God, and that is love, nothing else. Philanthropy, charity, pious activities, impious activities. <laughs> they can karmically improve the quality of our material life. But Krishna is only pleased by devotion. He is bhaktivatsal. This material world is a creation which facilitates that small minority of living beings who have personally chosen to live independent of this principle of pleasing God. Therefore, the Lord has created this world in such a way to facilitate are reviving that lost love of God. According to the scripture Srimad Bhagavatam, that is the only purpose of the universal creation, to help facilitate the revival of the love of God within our heart that has been forgotten. And therefore there are laws of karma that apply to every human being. The human being has free will, a rare benediction that is not to be found in any of the lower species. We can choose what we want to create for our own destiny. Because without free will, there cannot be real love. So the Lord does not interfere with our free will. Out of his causeless mercy, the Lord descends into this material world again and again and again. Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyuta nama dharmasya tatapmanam srijam yaham. To intervene with the illusions and the chaos of material existence and teach us a message and display beautiful pastimes. For what purpose? To give us the chance. But the Lord will never interfere 
with our free will. And in this world, oftentimes, those who want to do good are persecuted, laughed at, especially in this age of Kali Yuga. Bhagavad Gita tells that in this age, religion is taken to be irreligion and irreligion is taken to be religion. We are very, very honored to have with us almost 30 devotees from the Ukraine. I spoke last night to a small gathering of devotees about them, but I feel it is very uplifting for all of us to understand who they are and what they represent. In 1971, our beloved God brother Shamsunda Prabhu arranged for our Guru Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, to visit Russia. He was under heavy government restrictions. He was not allowed to speak to the common people, only a few professors. But somehow or other, Shamsundar, by his magical nature, just ran into two curious young people on the streets and brought them to Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada spoke to them all day, and they accepted Krishna consciousness as their heart and soul. And one Bhagavad Gita came into the behind the Iron Curtain. One single Bhagavad Gita. But those people were so hungry, so thirsty for something genuinely spiritual. That one Bhagavad Gita was Xeroxed, hand copied into thousands and thousands of copies. That's how desperate people were to read. Each Gita that was copied was probably read by dozens and dozens and dozens of people. And it became an illegal underground movement because the KGB banished it. And simply for practicing, simply for believing, people were apprehended, arrested, and imprisoned and often tortured, experimented on, and killed. There were over 50 devotees of Krishna in Soviet prisons. Some were injected drugs to destroy their brains, so they're dysfunctional and they're harmless to society. Others were getting diseased, with no medical treatment. Pregnant women having babies that just died miserably in a dire prison cell. And what was their fault? Only one thing. They wanted to love God and serve God in a way that was not accepted or understood by the oppressive government officials. So Ukraine was at that time behind that iron curtain. Atuta Priya Prabhu, who is one of the senior most leaders of the Ukraine, The KGB were hunting for him, but by his cleverness, he somehow or other, not only to carry on practicing Krishna consciousness, but he was teaching it to others, risking his life. 
and amongst us today is one of the great heroes, Amala Bhakta Prabhu. He's a simple person. He wasn't so clever how to somehow or other escape. He was just practicing devotion to God and he was arrested and sent to a prison camp. While there, he got tuberculosis and no medical treatment that was at all proper. He was suffering. He suffered in that way for almost three years. And his wife, Kirtida, had three children, three young children, some of them very, very small. She had to take care of the children. They were in utter poverty because their husband was taken away. The father was gone in prison. Please stand up, Amala Bhakta Prabhu. Does he look like a criminal that should be in a prison camp? It's just a, the most humble, he, he says he's a criminal. He's the most humble, gentle person you'll ever meet. But something amazing happened. At that time, the President of the United States was Ronald Reagan. And his wife, Nancy Reagan, she came to Russia. Yes? And somehow or other, you know, she wanted to s deal with the subject of human rights. And Kirtida, Amala Bhakta's wife, spoke with Nancy Reagan about the plight of her family and the injustice to her husband. And Nancy Reagan's heart was so moved that she talked to Mikhail Gorbachev's wife. And sometimes if you want to get something done politically, let the wives work it out. <laughs> and Nancy Reagan induced the sympathy of Mrs. Gorbachev and she talked to her husband and they freed Amala Bhakta Prabhu. And there was demonstrations all over the world at Russian embassies to free the Soviet Hare Krishnas who were being persecuted and several died simply because they wanted to practice the spiritual path that inspired their hearts. Now here in India, or for those who have come from the United States of America or Europe, there are laws of freedom of religion. But unfortunately, sometimes freedom makes us very complacent. We take things for granted. In the Bible, Lord Jesus, he said, be hot or cold, but if you are lukewarm, I spit you out. And Bhagavad Gita says same principle. Krishna tells, Vyabhashayat makabudhir eke hakudunandana. Those who are on this path are resolute in purpose. Their aim is one. There must be determination. There must be gratitude. Real spirituality, there's a passion, a sense of need for God. Unless you're hungry, you cannot digest food. Unless you feel a hunger, a need for the grace of God in our life, for the love of God in our life, then we cannot really properly digest whatever spiritual wisdom we are receiving. So these devotees who are sitting with us Many of them, 
in order for them to choose to follow their spiritual path, every one of them had to be willing to lay their life on the line. They had to subject themselves to imprisonment, torture, or even possible death. And they did it. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people behind the Iron Curtain made that choice, took that risk, because they understood the value and the necessity of Krishna or God in their lives in a real way. That is an offering of love. And we're so grateful to them. And we should, we should very, very uh, sincerely honor what they represent and also be introspective and take inventory of the quality of our own desires. Because the essence of the nature of the soul is to love God. And there is only one thing that God will accept, and that is love. He doesn't want anything else. He doesn't need anything else. God is self-sufficient. He doesn't need our money. He doesn't need our talents. He doesn't need whatever position we're in. He doesn't need us speaking about him. He can speak for himself. Anything that is done with ego, false ego, is not acceptable. Krishna is simply pleased with love. Bhaktya Tvananiyashakya Aham Evam Vidurajana. It is only by undevoted, undivided devotion that I can be understood as I am. So in this material world, to actually express love of God takes a process of purifying our hearts. Purifying our hearts of lust, envy, anger, greed, false pride and illusion. The clean heart naturally, spontaneously loves God and sees every living being as part of God and thus has spontaneous compassion for everyone. That is what spiritual life is about. It's not about being a Hindu or a Muslim or a Jew or a Christian or a Jain or a Buddhist. It's about purifying our heart, becoming humble, gentle, becoming intoxicated with an intense desire to serve the Lord and please the Lord and to be an instrument of that mercy in this world. That's all. Savai pung shang paro dharamo yato bhakti radhokshaja. The supreme occupation for all humanity is that which awakens unmotivated, uninterrupted love for the supreme, the cause of all causes. The Lord descends in this world according to time, place, and circumstance to reveal his compassion upon all the denizens of the world we live. And from time to time, the all-attractive Lord, Krishna, descends to reveal the pastimes of the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, there are no austerities. There is no persecution. There is no restraint. Because the spiritual world, the kingdom of God, is that place where everyone spontaneously, naturally loves the Lord with all their heart, mind, and soul. Brindavan is the highest abode of all spiritual worlds beyond this material existence. Sri Vrindavan Dham 
is that place where Krishna plays on his flute and charms the hearts of every living entity for eternity. And every living being in their love for God is offering their very hearts and Krishna reciprocates and every living being thinks, feels and knows that Krishna's intimate love is for me. An ordinary living being, if we love someone, we usually neglect someone else. But Krishna, he can love everyone perfectly and everyone could think that Krishna only loves me. That is his power. That is the power of God's love. Because God, Krishna, has supreme, unlimited love. Because we are a part and parcel of the Lord, we have the power to reciprocate and love Krishna. So the spiritual world is a place simply of ecstatic joy. Everyone's greatest happiness is in seeing Krishna happy and in seeing others happy. To the degree we're striving for our own happiness, we create so many problems. But to the degree we're striving for the happiness of others and the happiness of God, to that degree we're selfless. We're actually expressing love. That is the happiness of the soul. Other forms of pleasure are for the temporary mind and senses. But we are the soul. What is the pleasure that the soul is looking for? Love. And love is expressed through service. And the meaning of service is to please Krishna, the all-attractive one. By Srila Prabhupada's great kindness, he has enlightened us with this most wonderful culture to live within. And as a simple expression of our gratitude, every year we perform this festival of Pushya Bishek. Every flower petal that is going to be offered, and this year there happens to be over 2,000 pounds, one ton of flower petals that have been shipped in from many places, including roses from Brindaban. These are not just fragrant petals of flowers that we're offering to Krishna. He doesn't need that. He doesn't want that. It is the sincerity of the purpose in which it is being offered that pleases the Lord and that pleases the hearts of all of us. Srila Prabhupada wrote that the Lord does not accept what you offer. The Lord accepts the purpose in which it is offered. What is our intention? What is our sincerity? Hundreds of devotees have come together to participate in plucking the flowers, in transporting the flowers, in making beautiful ornaments and garments out of flowers. And everyone who is assembled, I think about one-fifth of the assembled devotees are in this temple room and others are watching on closed circuit TVs, wherever you are. The offering of love for all of us, it's not just those who are on the altar, but each one of us. If it is our intention 
to find happiness in seeing all the assembled devotees feeling bliss, worshiping the Lord. That is love. If it is our intention that with every flower petal, we are praying Krishna be pleased with this offering, then Krishna will be pleased with that offering. Even if you're somewhere downstairs, even if you can't see the closed circuit TV, if you're just offering your heart with those flower petals, your expression of love, then Krishna will feel that. Not the flower petal, but the love in which each of us is offering it. The pujari or the priest in the altar is simply making the offering on behalf of each and every one of us. And part of love is to be joyful. If you love someone, when they are pleased, you are happy. Yes? If a mother and father see the baby crying, it hurts them. If the mother and father see the baby very happy, if you do something for the baby and the baby becomes very happy, there's no greater joy to a real mother and father, a good mother and father. That is love. So it is a joyful festival. It is a festival of color. It is a festival of devotion. It is a festival of sincerity, of purpose. And that is what we will now celebrate. Pusha Bishak. In this age of Kali, the greatest offering we could present to the Lord is a pure heart. And according to our holy scriptures, there is no more powerful means of yoga to purify the heart than connecting with the Lord by chanting his holy names. Therefore, whatever offering we do, the name of God is always coming with it. Because the name of God transports our heart to the lotus feet of the Lord. So as the Pushyapi Sheikh is taking place, everyone please, with great enthusiasm and devotion, loudly chant the holy name. Is ready? Guru Das Prabhu, would you like to speak something now or tomorrow? Mm -hmm. okay. Guru Das Prabhu has written the most wonderful book about his remembrances of Srila Prabhupada. And Many of my very dear God brothers and God sisters from all over the world consider this one of the most enlivening, inspiring, and educating books on the personality of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Nothing here is theoretical. Whatever is written is written from the heart of Sri Guru Das Prabhu, who personally experienced in the inner circles of Prabhupada's life, his compassion, his humor, and his love. So I very highly recommend anyone who is inclined to please obtain one of these books. He's come all the way from San Francisco, California with his books. Just to share them with us. And tomorrow when he speaks in the morning and afternoon with Shamsunda Prabhu and Vishaka Prabhu, you will be struck with wonder. And you will hear just a few drops from the ocean of nectar contained within the pages 
of this holy scripture. We are all like flowers. Different types, champa, rose. Radhanath Maharaj has so nicely said, Gurdas has done this and Gurdas was president of that. And I simply think that I'm like a radio or television, and because Prabhupada was the perfect broadcaster of Krishna's wishes, I tuned in. I didn't do anything. An instrument to Prabhupada's wishes, because I tuned in. We also can tune in with sincerity and as Maharaj said, intent to serve Krishna. So let us consider, as I said, that we are like flowers with full enthusiasm and sincerity. We can serve when no one is watching, when someone is watching, if we serve Krishna with the same gusto as we eat prasadam, then we are getting someplace. So let us consider that we are a large bouquet of flowers offering ourselves to Krishna as we will offer these wonderful, delicate and aromatic petals to the Lord tonight. He already did it. Samashinda has asked me to. This is a bouquet of flowers, too. After the uh, Pushpa Abhishek downstairs, I will be uh, at a table with these books and I'll be signing them as well. Thank you, Sam Bishinda. So we will begin Push Yabi Sheikh, but first I would like to welcome some special guests. Let us very gratefully welcome the devotees from Ukraine that have come to give us their precious association this evening. And we also have my dear God brothers and God sisters, His Grace Buri John Prabhu, Chandramali Swami Maharaj, Guru Das Prabhu, Shamsundar Prabhu, Vishaka Prabhu, Nartaki Prabhu. Let us welcome them to Sri Radha Gopinath Temple. And my very dear old lifelong friend, Gary. Where is Gary? He's gone. Shopping. <laughs> and two of his dear friends, wonderful, wonderful people, who I'm so happy are here. Lynn and Davin. They have come from Malibu Beach, California, and I'm very, very grateful that you have come. Please consider us your humble family in India. Let us welcome David, Lind, and Gary to Radha Gopinath Temple. <laughs> And we have Lila Shuka Prabhu, Janak Mahajan Prabhu, wonderful, sincere devotees who are doing incredible service 
for devotees all over the world. Let us welcome them as well. <laughs> 